Hello and welcome to Psychgeist. I am your host, Dr. Rachel Cowart. So you want to study games? Awesome. Welcome to the family. I too was once a wee little student of video games. So full of hope, dreams of big data, so full of joy. And then, you know, grad school happened. So before you get started, I want to send you off into this wonderful world of science with three things that I wish I had known before I started studying games. Now, I worked in a very traditional psychology department where I got my PhD, and I was literally the only one studying games. But that doesn't mean I was alone. Tip number one, find your community. Find them, know them, and love them. Not only are there loads of other people, hundreds, thousands of other people studying games, their entire community centered around even the niche areas of interest. Games and learning, games and social outcomes, game design, gamification, games and extremism. You need to find these people, you need to get to know them, and you need to love them. You need to cling to them and never let them go. They will be the people who understand your regression woes at 2 a.m. the night before your departmental seminar. They will be the ones that can find you that one research study that you read that one time and you kind of remember the second author and vaguely what it's about. They will know what you're talking about and they will find it. Where do you find them, you ask? Well, if not in your immediate department, I didn't have that luxury, but many people do. You can start university-wide. For instance, at my university, they had a frag society. I was too anxious to join, um, but I'm sure that would have been a great place to start. There's also the magic of the internet. Uh, Games Network is the DIGRA mailing list, the Digital Games Research Association mailing list. And while it's known by some for having perhaps interesting threads that pop up every once in a while, it's also a great place to send questions and to broadly start integrating yourself into the community of game study scholars. There's also Twitter until it completely burns down. I host a list on my website of game study scholars on Twitter. Start following them, start interacting with them, liking them, send them, you know, Henry Cavill gifts, whatever floats your boat. Through commenting and sharing and we we tweeting through commenting and sharing and retweeting before too long you'll find yourself integrated uh, into that little community there are also discords now full disclaimer i am not super into discord i belong to several of them the only one i actively engage in is to take this discord because i believe it is the most wholesome place on the internet um, and there is a research channel there where i do interact with other game study scholars in that particular channel in that particular discord but i know there are a range of other discords that are associated with all different areas of game study game research and game design so if you aren't aware of any discords that kind of fit into your area of interest just start asking around i'm sure there's one or a dozen um, that are affiliated with that particular area piece of advice number two it is so much more in who you know than what you know when I finished my postdoc, I was ready for the big world of academia. I was gonna make it on my own. I was gonna get an assistant professorship and it was gonna be amazing. Getting my foot in the door, getting your name to the top of the hundreds of applications that go for each position was an uphill battle. One that I did not climb. It is so much more about who you know than what you know if you want to pursue a career in academia so how do you meet these people? Networking, the, the, the buzzword that maybe lots of you don't wanna hear, but it truly is the answer. There's no substitution for just making connections. And that's what I mean by networking. I mean, making actual honest connections with other people, not seeking out people who you think that you can get some kind of favor or some kind of um, link to for a job in the future. Just know everybody. Go to conferences, go to small local conferences, go to big international conferences and just talk and interact and meet the other people in your field and in your community. Because as you continue to go through this process, as you complete your PhD or your master's or whatever it is you're doing, these are the people that are gonna have feelers out and be like, I remember that one girl who I met at that small conference in that one town and she's doing exactly that thing that you're talking about and I'm gonna connect you. That's how those connections happen. That's why I say it's more about who you know than what you know. Although you have to know some things. And I'll be honest, game studies, people, the community of game studies scholars for me have been overwhelmingly welcoming and loving and wonderful. Except for that one guy who asked if it was my boyfriend who made my website but I'm not friends with him. And that's just like one guy out of like all the people I've met. Overwhelmingly, they've been great. Advice number three, and this is a really hard lesson for baby Rachel to learn. The internet is gonna internet, especially when it comes to games. No matter how scientifically sound or how well designed or how not hot your hot take might be, there's someone on the internet that's gonna disagree with you. 
There will always be people who misinterpret your work. There will always be people who misquote you. There will always be people that believe you are not coming from a place of good intentions. And you just have to be able to sit with that knowledge and know that it's just going to happen. Let me regale you with the story. Um, I was at a conference a couple weeks ago and I was at a meeting with a lot of people around a table and I was talking about my current work and I was interrupted mid-sentence by someone um, as I was explaining how games are overwhelmingly good and that doesn't preclude us from having discussions about the things in which might be bad about gaming spaces. We were talking about moderation and hate and harassment and that sort of thing. And I was interrupted mid-sentence and by someone at the end of the table said, oh, I'm sorry, Rachel. I don't think they said, I'm sorry. <laughs> they just said, that's not what you say to the media, implying that me sitting at this table saying games are overwhelmingly good is not a narrative that I have told to the media, which is just patently false. That is absolutely the soapbox that I've always stood on, and which is what I responded to. I said, actually, I can't choose how I'm quoted, but that has absolutely always been my stance. And if you see any of my talks or any of my YouTube channels or anything I've ever written, that has always been my perspective because it's true. Games are overwhelmingly good when it comes to the uses and effects of games. And we look you know, across mental health impacts. Point being, no matter your intentions, no matter if 99 people at the table are on board, there's always one who will dissent. And we just have to sit with that and know that there's not much we can do at all to stop that from happening. But don't take it personally. So that's it. You find your community, you find them, you know them, you love them. You network if you wanna have a job in this space after you complete your graduate program, after you complete your studies. And the internet's gonna internet. You do the best you can, with what you have at the moment, follow open science standards. There's a video on that. And let it be in the world. And there'll always be one who dissents, but that's all right. We can live with that. Haters gonna hate. If you like this video and wanna see more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, be excellent to each other and always cite your sources.